Father, in Jesus' name, please bless me and cleanse. With thanksgiving, I pray thee. Amen. Everybody, this is Angelo Quinones and your Sign Ministries. Sign Ministries is designed to give you dependable and accurate answers that come straight from God's Holy and as far as the Bible. And again, my name is Angelo. Um, Jehovah's Witnesses like to use this text okay, against the bodily resurrection of Jesus. Okay, Mark from Missouri, Mark Jackson, actually um, tried to use this verse okay, uh, against me in a debate. And uh, he was using it really against the Lord's bodily resurrection from the dead. It's actually uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse verse uh, 16. Okay? Before the famous verse 17 passage of Scripture. Now, what are we going to do with this? Well, we're going to read it. <laughs> That's just the deal. We're going to get into the Greek. But this doesn't have to do anything with the flesh of Jesus at all. It has to do with our carnal, um, past understanding of Jesus, and not only our understanding, uh, our old, let's put it like this, our old understanding of, the, of, of him, of who he was, according to our fleshly minds, you understand what I'm saying? But according, you know, to our fleshly minds, we knew uh, everybody else in a certain way. We don't know them, including Christ, and everybody else anymore like that. That's what it really means before I get into it. And I'm going to get into it right now. Okay, now, um, let me see something over here because it's actually, um, the percentage is very low on the phone. So let me see if I could, you know, spice this up a little bit. Okay. Okay, let's read the passage of Scripture. It says over there, Therefore, from now on, we, the Apostle Paul is speaking, we recognize no one. That's the key to understand. We recognize no one according uh, to the flesh, even uh, though we have known okay, Christ according to, uh, to the flesh, yet now, okay, probably noon in Greek, we know him in this way no longer. Well, if you're going to say that Jesus doesn't have any flesh, well, you're going to have to say that everybody doesn't have any flesh. That's the problem we're using this passage against the bodily resurrection of Jesus. That he actually has a body now. Because he, you know, I went through that already in my, and this is a part of the agnosticism, uh, not agnostic, agnosticism. Agnosticism means resurrection, okay? I used to pronounce it anastasis, and I, and I guess I'm going to go back to that because it sounds, it doesn't sound like agnostic, you know? So well, I'm not talking about agnostics, okay? I'm talking about, or gnostics, I'm talking about anastasis, resurrection. That's the word for resurrection, you understand what I'm saying? That's just the deal. But over here is recorded. Let's look at the first passage uh, here, the first part. Therefore, from now on, says the Apostle Paul, we recognize no one according to the flesh. There's a semicolon after that. According to the flesh. So if you're saying, if you're using, if a JW uses a scripture, he can't use it. Why? Well, then, if you say that Jesus doesn't have any flesh anymore, and we don't recognize him in, in, in that way, uh, that, uh, of him having flesh, it doesn't say that. It says that we don't recognize him according to this way any longer, meaning our fleshly, according to our fleshly minds. And it talks about the new creation in the next in the next verse of Scripture. Okay? We're going to read that, because Jehovah's Witnesses don't read it. They just read this. They don't read, okay, what went before. And what went before... Okay, talks about uh, we giving an account to God of things done in the body, whether good or bad. Okay, this scripture is not talking about Jesus not having it in the flesh. It's not. Because if you come to that conclusion, like I said before, okay, you will have to conclude that nobody has flesh, for it is written. Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one, probably Ude in the Greek, no one according, probably Kata there, according to the flesh, Greek word sarx. No one. 
not that we don't know, according to the witnesses, uh, interpretation of this passage of scripture. We know we they, you know that they can't interpret the Bible. They tried and they can't. Millions not living will never die and they're all dead. Abraham and Isaac and Jacob were going to come back and they didn't. Uh, the false dates and crimes of our Lord's return. He didn't return. I mean, magic wheat and corn. That was a, a sham. Uh, 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 the Great Pyramid of Egypt, Egypt is on par with the Bible. That was shot. Nobody was going to go to the moon. About 600 uh, people went to space, including 12, 24 people going to the moon. And not only that, there's rockets being tested right now. There's a rocket that's going to go up soon. In uh, June of 2024, that's that's where I'm, the time that I'm living in now. And people are going to go to space like a root, this is gonna, like, it's, like, it's, like brushing your teeth. So this is the false prophecy of 1943. You understand what I'm saying? 1943... And the, the the prophecy saying that uh, nobody was going to break the envelope or the atmosphere, whatever the case may be, that shot. Captain Kirk went to the moon, for, for God's sake. You know what I'm saying? Not to the moon, but to, to space, you know. You know, to space. And people went to the moon for the first time after the prophecy, like 26 years after the prophecy, of the false prophecy of 1943, and the truth shall set, shall set you free. You know what I'm saying? People went to the moon just 26 years and people went to space around maybe let's say 17 years after that false prophecy something like that take a you know give it take a couple of years you know what I'm saying I mean I could go on and on and on we can't trust the witnesses to interpret the scripture we can't that's just the deal but it says over here uh, therefore from now on we recognize no one according to the flesh meaning I don't have flesh right now I'm not touching myself I got flesh Ouch, by the way. Goodness gracious. I got flesh. So I don't recognize my wife in heaven flesh? Is, is that the deal? You know, when we go to church, nobody has flesh in the pews? So, 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 so I guess Mark from Missouri didn't have any flesh when he was debating uh, yours truly. You know what I'm saying? I thought he was a football player. He didn't have any flesh? Maybe that's why he didn't make it to the NFL because he ain't had no flesh. Huh? Come on, man. It's like Joe Biden all over again. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. You know what I mean? Let me just check the percentage on the phone because I want to make sure it's not like one because then I really have to go because then this thing will be annihilated. <laughs> is that what I'm saying? That's another thing. Annihilation. Come on, man. But we're not really we're not really going through our resur future resurrection and and then and or um, you know another kind of resurrection, the resurrection of the just. We're not we're not really we're not really hitting that topic, even though I did before already in debates and campaigns. But I, I'm really um, um, looking at the bodily resurrection of Jesus, which is the capstone of Christianity. Remove it in all else crumbles. It is a singular doctrine that elevated Christianity above all the pagan religions of the world. You understand what I'm saying? That's just a deal. But no one, I recognize no one because that's what you have. You can't skip that. You can't skip the first part of this verse and jump to the to the to the other bumper car. You understand what I'm saying? It says over here, therefore, from now from now on, we recognize okay, no one according to the flesh, even though it says over here. Let me let me take out take out the uh, you know the outline. Uh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him in this way no longer. And that means our human understanding, the old way of, of knowing Jesus, we don't know we don't know him like that now. God was not in all our thoughts, you understand what I'm saying? Nobody's born being a Christian person. Nobody knows. Nobody's born knowing Jesus. The only one close to that was John the Baptist that, that had the Holy Spirit since his birth. But we ain't John the Baptist, though, man. We were, you know, we were like a whole bunch of Tonka toys doing the wrong thing. You understand know what I mean? You can't, you can't divorce these two scriptures, to, these two parts. If you don't know Jesus according to the flesh, meaning he ain't got no flesh, but nobody else has any flesh, including you. You understand what I'm saying? I'm just saying, he ain't got no flesh. 
the person who's speaking this against us, well, I don't know you according to the flesh, meaning you ain't got no flesh. Come on, man. Goodness gracious, man. We don't know him in that way. You understand what I'm saying? We don't know him in the way that we used to do because we become a new creature. Now check this out. This is our attitude before we were born. Again, you understand what I'm saying? Verse 15, look at the context though. And he, meaning uh, Jesus, died for all so that they who live, okay, might no longer live for themselves, you see? The way they used to behave, the way they used to think, but for, okay, but for him who died, and rose again on their behalf. Therefore, you see that that's the, the, the therefore is there for a reason, said Dr. Barnhouse. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying. In his old famous Romans uh, study, which took, took about 11 years to complete. And it's one of these grand studies of Romans. The other one was by uh, uh, Martin Luther, the Protestant reformer. And then the other one, uh, the great one, was by Martin uh, Lloyd Jones. That was probably the greatest of all. I mean, you know, when you really get down to it, the studies of the Holy Spirit is imp impeccable. You know what I'm saying? It took like about you know, 20 years to make that study or whatever it was. I think it was like maybe basically, I don't know, like 10 years. I mean, I don't know why they do a study so long. Everybody's going to grow, grow old in church. By the time you get to chapter 12, I mean, everybody, you know, is over the hill and, 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 and they can't serve God anymore. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But anyway, it says over here, therefore, therefore, it goes back to what was written before. Let's go to first, uh, first Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter two or chapter one, something like that. Let's check it out. I mean, it's just, I mean, you know. Let's see here. I think it's in verse 16, isn't it? Uh, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Let me see here. Uh, chapter 1 and verse... Uh, let me see the last verse. Let me see. Let me see. It might be this uh, right over here. Yes, it is. Chapter 2, it says over here, For who has known the mind of the Lord? See, nobody. So we didn't know him well at all because it was according to the flesh. Who has known the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Well, if we, we needed the mind of Christ, we, we, we had to get rid of the mind that we had before including the thoughts that we had of him and everybody else. We have the mind of Christ now, you understand what I'm saying? And we could think about Jesus in a different way. And not only Jesus, but the people that were written before Jesus in that text of verse 16 of chapter uh, 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 Second Corinthians of chapter 5. We know people differently now, you understand what I'm saying? Not according to our fleshly minds. The flesh, the Greek word sarx there, okay, sark is the stem, you understand what I'm saying? Let's look at the Greek. So sark is the is the stem. Not sarx. You know, that's a nominative sigma there pressed against the uh ooh, let me see, against the um I press against the, 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 the kappa and then it becomes kasi. That's that's what happened in the construction, you understand what I'm saying? Um let me just let this part go, okay, and I'll be right back. And the reason why I did that is because if I don't and the phone shuts off, well, the study, at least that part, the second part is going to be eh, annihilated. You know what I'm saying? Let's get out of Matthew's gospel, you understand what I'm saying? Because I am talking about the resurrection. You understand? And let's get to the nitty gritty. And the nitty gritty is found and recorded in Second Corinthians chapter five, verse sixteen. I ain't gonna forget it now. I'm, I always have a problem finding it because I forget where it is. It's just not a passage of scripture that's popular. Like verse seventeen, that's popular. You understand what I'm saying? But verse sixteen is very, is incredible. Also, 
um, in a good way. Um, so that was, uh, what, verse 16? Verse 16. See, I forgot already. <laughs> so, well, it says over here, it says, therefore, I mean, you know, that's, uh, that's a uh, hoste. Hoste, capital Omega Sigma Tau Epsilon, therefore. That's a conjunction, not, that's not a, uh, that's not a personal ending there, okay? We, okay, hey, Mace, from the hey, Mace paradigm, hey, Mace, hey, Mon, hey, Mean, hey, Mas, it's a, it's a uh, first person plural, uh, first person uh, plural pronoun from the, uh, from the hey, Mace paradigm. Plural, plural, plural part of paradigm. You know what I'm saying? Apa from over here. Okay, two is not translated now. And that's a new one, like I said. Actually pronounced Nin now. Okay, no one, and that's U, uh, U, Udena, actually. Udena. Uh, no one. And sometimes it's uh, Udes. Ude. Right. Regard. Okay, Oida men. Regard. Okay, that's in the that's in the that's in a perfect tense though, regard. And um Oida men, actually Oida men, and that's uh a, 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 the primary act of personal ending men there. And um it says according, okay, kata, okay, the flesh. Okay, uh sarka, and that's in the accusative case, feminine uh, singular construction from the from the Greek word sark in the lexicon is sarks, which is actually this time is sark. Okay. You don't have to worry about the kisi. Uh you don't have to worry about the kisi until you get to the nominative singular and the date of plural. Okay, that you see uh sarks and sarks there. After after that, everything is with a kappa and uh and one or two or three extra uh, one or two uh, extra or three extra letters or whatever the case may be. You understand what I'm saying? But the flesh it doesn't have to do with Jesus, though. That's our flesh, according to the flesh, according to our flesh, according to our understanding. We don't know Jesus in that way any longer or anybody else because everybody else has flesh. I mean, so if you're saying that we don't know Jesus according to the flesh, well, you're gonna have to say that you don't know anybody else according to the flesh, and then nobody else got flesh. Come on, man. Though it says a okay even and kai could be pronounced e, uh, translated even, and by the way, there's a good translation said uh, Walter Martin to Julius Armanti was recorded in Titus chapter two verse thirteen. Okay, um, I think uh, uh, our God, even our Lord Jesus Christ, or something like that. You know, God our Savior. God our Savior, uh, even the Lord Jesus Christ. I got to look at that again, you know. But even is a good translation there, and I have to rush. We have, okay, regarded. We have regarded. And that's a, that's a imperfect tense, I-A. Okay, R-I-A, imperfect, imperfect, indicative, active. Uh, eg no, eg no, gamen. And then you have the, the, the kappa alpha uh, perfect uh the ten stem, and then the man, the personal ending man, and then egno uh, for the uh, for the uh, that's the um, the the ten stem, the pres the perfect ten stem, egno. Okay, or oh, actually geno, and then and so that's just the deal over there. And you see geno is actually the, the the stem, and so that's just the deal. And then you have egno right here. Egno, we uh, have uh, regarded, we have regarded. Okay, according a kata, okay, uh, to flesh, okay, sarka, and it takes the accusative kata, uh, uh, according to flesh, Christ, okay, Christon, and that's uh, an accusative case, a case, of lim case of limitation as to extent, yet, Allah, that's very strong, Allah, Alpha, Landa, Landa, Alpha, this is not the God of the Muslims, man, come on, get with it though, man. Stop trying to in insinuate yourself in the Bible. I thought that you didn't like the Bible. I thought you said the Bible was corrupt, and then you're trying to use it, and you're trying to say that this is this is Allah, the God of the Muslims. This means this means but or yet or whatever the case may be, man. Not even capitalized. Not a name. This is not a name. It's a conjunction, man. Try to try stop trying to take the land from Israel and, and stop trying to plagiarize from our Bible. Come up with something yourself. 
I know there's a contradiction in your in your Quran. I mean, uh, the one of the sons of Noah died in one surah, uh, one chapter, and then he lived in another. I mean, it's a contradiction. Don't talk about, don't talk. Kill, kill, clean your own skirts over there at the mosque. You understand what I'm saying? Then it says over here now noon. Okay, noon. Now, uh, no longer it says over here uh, uketi, uketi no longer. That's the last. Uh, no, that's not the last. Uketi. It says over here. We recognize him uh, thus. Okay, ge no skaben. And the we is in the men. Just like nu means us or our in Hebrew. Eloheinu in the, in the Shema. You understand what I'm saying? Shema Yisrael. Yahweh, Eloheinu, Yahweh, Echad. You see, that's just the deal. And nu means us in Hebrew. Like me, menu, and lanu. You understand what I'm saying? So that's just the deal. Geno skamen. Primary act of uh, personal ending man connecting uh, Val Omicron. And so that's just the deal. And this is uh, a present indicative active uh, form. You understand what I'm saying? So that's just it all across the board. Well, uh, this doesn't mean what the Jehovah's Witnesses are saying. And what are they saying? Well, they're saying that, that we don't know Jesus. We, we, we recognize Jesus that he ain't got no flesh. But that's not what it's saying, though, man. We have the mind of Christ now. And so we don't know Jesus according to our fleshly understanding. You love the word understanding, so I just inserted that there. Don't complain about it. Don't wait twine and squeal. Oh, you inserted the word understanding. Understanding is not there. Well, understanding, uh, baby boy, and baby girl at the tower with your, your short pants and skirts. Understanding is not there in uh, verse uh, 7 of uh, Revelation chapter 1, but you inserted understanding, the eyes of the understanding. So don't be didn't want to complain. I'm just saying. Don't bitch, whine, and complain. That's a strong word, bitch, right? I mean, that's a female dog in some kind of language. Don't bitch and whine and complain. Don't bark about it, dog. You can't complain what you all do yourself. That's just, that's just, that's just, that's just, that's just a deal. We have the mind of Christ that says over here very plainly and clearly. So let's go back to that scripture. Don't bitch, whine, and complain. I know I'm using strong language, but you should have seen Martin Luther. First of all, he used to belch in front of everybody at the table <laughs> and pop out these jokes and stuff like that. And then people used to write these jokes down. You know what I'm saying? Let's just, let's just, uh, let me um, uh, keep this. You know what I'm saying? I'm a Martin Lloyd, Martin, not Martin Lloyd Jones, but Martin Luther was to be worse. He was to be worse. And I'm talking about Martin Luther King. I'm talking about the Protestant reform and to turn the world upside down in 1517 AD. You understand what I'm saying? Against the Catholics. You understand what I'm saying? He used to belch at the table. He used to pop up, pop up these, pop up these jokes in front of everybody, and people used to write them down in their books, the little booklets. He used to be popping jokes and he used to write them down. <laughs> and he said like that the, the doctrine, the teaching of the Roman Catholic Church. It's like dung. Everybody knows what dung is. I'm, that I'm not going to say. You know, that comes out of your, you know, your rear and stuff like that and goes into, you know, a certain bowl. You understand what I'm saying? And he said that, you know, the Roman, the, the doctrine, the teaching of the Roman Catholic Church is like dung on plates of silver and gold. I mean, come on, man. I mean, you know, he, he, he jabbed a little stronger than I did. Sometimes anyway. I mean, sometimes I do it better than him. You know what I'm saying? You can't bitch, whine, and complain. Don't bitch, whine, and complain about it. The towel. I'm talking about the towel. Don't be using the scripture, though, and bitch, whine, and complain. I'm just saying. I'm not trying to be, you know, I'm not trying to be nasty or mean. It's, it's, it's not Janet Jackson. I mean, you know. But I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be the way I am. You can't be hypocritical about it and stuff like that and say, oh, well, you know, you, you, Jesus ain't got no flesh. But then you have to say that everybody else doesn't have any flesh either. If you use this, you know what I'm saying? That's just the deal. That's the trap that you guys uh, are in. It's like the Hatfields, the Hatfields and McCoys. Now, let me read this again. <laughs> but let me read verse 17 because time is of the essence. This might be <coughs> cut off. This, 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 you know, the study, you know what I'm saying? Therefore, and I'll do a part two. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, and the therefore goes right back to verse 16. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, 
He is a new creation. The old things. You see, the, the way of thinking about Jesus and everybody else and all that other stuff. The old things passed away. You see, those things passed away. Our, our understanding of Jesus, as warped as it was, passed away. Behold, and, and everybody else. Uh, the understanding about everybody else is what really is to be a man and a woman. You understand what I'm saying? And by the way, uh, God created Adam and, Adam and Eve, and not Adam and Steve. Actually, Adam and Hawa. Actually, in the Hebrew, Hawa. That's Eve. You know, this is no Eve, though. That's English or whatever it is. You understand what I'm saying? Talking about the Hebrew. Behold, new things, meaning the new understanding of Jesus and everybody else, according to the, the mind of Christ that we have. New things have come. You see? Now, all these things are from God, says over here, who, uh, who uh, reconciled us to himself and gave through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. You see, that's just the deal. That's the, that's the deal. It's not that, that, that Jesus ain't got no flesh. It's, just, it's not that uh, it's not that nobody else has any flesh. <laughs> Come on, man. I mean, you know, verse 17 really spits it out what it's talking about. I mean, it's talking about all things have become new and including the way we used to think about Jesus and about everybody else. You understand what I'm saying? So this idea that the runny nose JWs can use verse 16 against us and against, and not even against us only, but against the body and the resurrection of Jesus, meaning that he ain't had no birthday suit at the time of his resurrection. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, you can't trust the witnesses, thou. Is Angelo Quinones giving glory to the God of Israel? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And that means that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were very much alive at the time that Jesus said those words. And it also means that Jesus has a God according to the resurrection from the dead. That God raised him from the dead. That's why he has a that's why he has a God and he's the servant, the branch. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 8. You understand what I'm saying? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You understand? Please subscribe to my channel. Please give me a thumbs up. <laughs> okay, that's a great B. And the Hebrew pay sometimes. You understand what I'm saying? When it's hard. And please leave your comment on the screen. Don't let Jehovah's Witnesses use or misuse or the twist of their own distractions. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. Don't let them do that. As a matter of fact, Mark from Missouri gave the wrong the wrong scripture. <laughs> I had to find it myself. You understand what I'm saying? He said like Second Corinthians chapter 15 or chapter 16. I said, wait a minute, it ain't no Second Corinthians chapter 15 and 16. That's 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 in in First Corinthians. Now come on, man, know your Bible. What do you learn in the tower? You understand what I'm saying? From those teacher dirty dirty looks. You understand what I'm saying? Goodness gracious. Don't y'all don't know at the tower there ain't no fifteenth chapter, sixteenth chapter, or even fourteenth chapter in uh Second Corinthians? Come on, man. Just like Joe Biden, like I said all over again. Come on, man. Know your Bible, man. Not the pamphlets and magazines and the teachers dirty looks at the tower. That's not good enough. They ain't gonna get you in the kingdom. You're not even close to the kingdom, you understand what I'm saying? At least Jesus used to tell people, uh, you know, far from the kingdom, you ain't in it. But you ain't far away. I mean, you guys as far as the east is from the west. You know what I'm saying? That's just the deal. And not only that, y'all better get it right. There's six uh, essentials in the historic uh, of the historic Christian faith. I'm trying to rush, you know. Six of them. Hammered out by B.B. Warfield at the 20th century, the turn of the 20th century. Want to hear them? Let me spit them out before this, uh, this is, like I said, a cutoff. Annihilated, destroyed. You understand what I'm saying? All the words that you use at the tower. Number one, inspiration of the scriptures. Number two, the deity of Christ. Number three, the virgin birth. Number four, the substitutionary atonement work upon the cross. You don't even believe it was on the cross. You think it's a stake. Like the plaque was written over his hands. It wasn't. It was written over his, his kephalite, his head. You understand what I'm saying? And not only that, okay, the bodily resurrection of Jesus. And number six, you understand what I'm saying? Last but not the least, the second coming of Christ. This is Angelo Quinones. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. May you teach these truths to your family and to your, to your loved ones before it's too late. How shall you escape if you neglect so great salvation? Our God is a consuming fire.
eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. You understand what I'm saying? Unquenchable fire, says John the Baptist in uh, Luke chapter 3 and Matthew chapter 3. If it was annihilation, it would be quenchable. But it's unquenchable. You understand what I'm saying? I think the Greek word is like afesto, something like that. You understand what I'm saying? Come on, man. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That means if you don't call upon the name of Jesus, you don't believe in the prayer to Jesus, it's possible. You ain't going to be saved. Joel chapter 2 says you will be saved if you call, if you agree, if you confess. You understand what I'm saying? If you believe in the deity of Christ. If you believe that he's Yahweh. If you believe that he was bodily raised from the dead by God the Father. If you call upon his name, his name, you will be saved. Joel chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, Praxis Apostle alone, by the way, and Romans chapter 10, all across the board. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Maybe so in your life. May you be saved. Amen? Now, well, welcome to part 2. Let's check out 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. Because I think this is the code de grace. This is the key to understand verse 16 of chapter uh, 5 of 2 Corinthians. You understand? Now, remember the Jehovah's Witnesses would like to use and abuse Okay, uh, chapter six, uh, chapter uh, Second Corinthians, chapter five, verse sixteen. Okay, we don't recognize anyone according to the flesh. We don't recognize any uh, Christ according in that way. I mean, come on, man! It's not. It's not. It's not their flesh. Verse fourteen says something like this: the person or the carnal mind, okay, without the spirit, the natural, uh, the natural man without the spirit. Says another translation. The person without the Spirit, meaning the Holy Spirit, does not accept the things. You see, the things that come from the Spirit of God, from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand, you see, and cannot understand them because they, meaning the spiritual things, are discerned only through the spirit so we had this outlook in life especially those who came from other cults and sects you understand what I'm saying what I mean by cult I don't mean something that's evil I mean something that you know a group of people are gathering themselves around the interpretation of the bible but they can become evil when they misinterpret it because cult in Spanish is not even a, a bad word cult culto means group is that what I'm saying? It's what you do in that group. Okay, now now in English, cult is a sort of bad thing, you know, the cult of Trump or the cult of whatever the case may be. By the way, this is for the Christian people out there that call themselves Christian people. How can you support, and this is going on in the United States, how can you support, and I'm from the United States of America, I was born and raised in the United States of America in 1965, you understand what I'm saying, in New York. But I'm here in the Philippines right now. But anyway, so I can talk all I want about the United States because I'm 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 an American citizen, born and raised. You understand what I'm saying? Born first in the Bronx and raised uh, in the Bronx and in Queens. Queens was my last stop before I came over here back in 19, uh, back in 1918. Millie's <laughs> not living will never die. Back in 2018. So I can beef and whine and complain about you know about my own country. How can you how you, how can you support? A man that was just recently convicted of a felony, fel felony, I should say, of a crime, of having sex with a porn star, and and and, and trying to uh, hide it so that way he can he can uh, influence an election. He was found guilty. So I'm not saying I'm not saying anything contrary to the facts. Now he has to take it to the public court, uh, to the and, and maybe maybe if they want to hear it, also to, they don't have to hear it, or the Supreme Court, <clears throat> and they don't have to hear it either. But he's a convicted felon, and he could do jail, jail time. There's four years for every count of 34 counts uh, that he was found uh, guilty in. And, and by the way, that's the jury that found him guilty, not not the Democratic Party. That's a, that's a jury just like you and me. You understand what I'm saying? They found a guy guilty as charged. But then you see the evangelical church, and, and you know one of the nice two Jewish boys, or Jonathan, supports this guy. But anyway, nevertheless, I mean— Many, 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 many evangelicals support Donald Trump. Man, he had a, his hands in somebody's skirt. 
committing adultery with, with, with several people and uh, paid off a porn star and then the people are in bed with him man they're, they're in bed with a cult I'm telling you and then they call themselves the church let's get back to this man I mean you know I mean you know Jesus said it very clearly when I come back shall I find faith upon the earth I mean I don't think he got any faith around here around there I should say in the United States you understand what I'm saying you got maybe eight people that are saved and that's about it I'm just saying you know it's, it's that small but let's get back to this it says over here now let me look at another translation I think this is the NIV let me look at the uh I mean, that's just... Let me look at the NASV uh, at this point. But let's look at their um, verse before we get there. Uh, let's look at the verse that they misuse. Okay, because I'm right here anyway. I just want to refresh your minds. Now, I already looked at the surrounding context. I looked at verse uh, 15 and 17. So I'm not going to do that right now because I just looked at it. I looked at the surrounding context. They didn't, meaning the Watchtower and Bible track. Society, you understand what I'm saying? So let's look at verse 16 over here. It says over here, therefore, and therefore is there for a reason, Dr. Barnhouse said again. It reflects back to what, what was just written. So you can't take this out of out of context. You gotta read it around the surrounding context. Therefore, for now on, we recognize no one, okay, Udete, Udeti, I think. According kata, according to the flesh, Greek word sarx, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now he no longer has any flesh. Does it say that? Doesn't say that. Now we know him in this way no longer, meaning the way of the flesh, the way of our carnal minds. Now, I want to read, according to this translation, okay, uh, I want to read 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2 and verse 14, chapter 2 and verse uh, 14, okay? It says over here, but a natural man, you see, a, a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that is, of God, for they are foolishness. Uh, to him, meaning the things of the spirit, a pollution to him, and he cannot, okay, understand. Now I don't know if that's the Greek word dunatai there, but I mean that he doesn't have the ability to understand. But we could check that in another time. He cannot, or uh, he does not have the ability to understand them because they are spiritually uh, appraised or uh, understood or discerned. Says another translation. And if you go down here. You understand know what I'm saying? This is the code of God. This is verse uh, 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. See? Now, we didn't need the mind of Christ if we were already okay in our, in our fleshly understanding about Christ and about everybody else. So I think we can clone these verses. This is verse 16. Could be a good answer to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 2, verse 16. Could be a good answer to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. There you go. That's a good clone. I clone those verses. Okay, 16 and 16, because you could get the answer right there. When they give you 2, uh, two 5, 16, just go back to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse uh, 16. That's just a deal. Now, let me get back at verse 14 according to the Greek, okay? Because I want to I wanna see if Sarx is in there in a, in, a, in a special way. But let's just see. Okay, and remember, we're answering the witnesses of their charge against the body of uh, the physical body of Jesus being raised up from the dead. They don't believe in that, but that's their tough luck. You understand what I'm saying? Now, uh, we know that flesh is here uh, around two times. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. But let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter uh, chapter 2 and verse 14 and see if flesh is there. Okay, I want to make a sort of connection. If it's not, it's not, but if it is, it is. You know, so let's just see anyway. 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 2, verse 14. Okay. 
And it says over here, the natural man, and let's check this out, Psu, Psu, Ki, Psu Kikas, and that's uh, from Seoul. So the so Solo's man, Psu Kikas. Psu Kikas. This is very hard to say, Psu Kikas. I mean, that's hard. If you want to see, you just cheat a little bit, Psu Kikas, you know, with a, with a sort of like a kappa sound on the Ki, go right ahead. I mean, you know, just check with your che teacher, but it's hard to say. Usually the, the Greeks don't like that sound or, or like that. You know what I'm saying? Psuchikas. Okay, the fleshly man, uh, the, the soulish man, if you know, the natural man. However, post positive de. Okay, man is uh, anthro, anthropos. Not, and that's u. So whatever's coming up is in the indicative or whatever came before, whatever the case may be. Uh, an indicative is right there. Present indicative, middle, passive construction, accepts or uh, de de getai, de getai, accepts the things. Okay, ta. And that's just an article. Remember that the, the article is a weak and demonstrative. It's a weak demonstrative. <laughs> it's like Italian. It's a weak demonstrative. You understand what I'm saying? Of the two spirit. Okay, panuma. Panuma tas actually is in the genitive. Okay, um, and that's just the deal. Uh, it's a genitive construction, panumatas, and panumat actually is the stem. Okay, panu, uh, panumat is the stem there. Okay, that's the stem of panuma, panumat, because of the because of the uh, genitive construction. You could easily easily check out what's the stem by by dropping the omicron and the sigma in the genitive here, or even the omega and the, and the nu. Okay, in panumaton, and then you could check out what the stem is. Uh, it says over here, two of God, okay, uh, two theu of God, the spirit of God, spirit of God, okay, foolishness, it says over here, moria, that's where you get the word moron from, I believe, you understand what I'm saying, for, post positive, gar, for of him, auto, and that's in the date of case, the case of interest, you know, atas, atu, ato, atan, they are, okay, estin, that's from the epo paradigm, epo, a, estin, S men S to Asin and uh, translating Kai not and that's U he is able and there you go Dunatai I was right Dunatai he is not able he doesn't have the ability to understand to perceive these things you understand what I'm saying to accept these things uh, Dunatai says over here to understand he's not able to understand he doesn't have the ability to understand them them is not there but so what Genonai Genonai that's an infinitive. The ni, the nu, nowadays called ni, alpha, iota, morphine. That's an infinitive morphine. Genonai. 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 Okay. To understand. Almost sounds like my last name, Quinones. Okay. That's a completely different thing, I believe. Because, and that's a Greek word, hati. Because, okay, spiritually, it says we have pen, penum, uh, penu, mat, Okay, not spiritually. And spiritually, um, they are discerned. Okay, anakrinetai. Anakrinetai, discerned. And that's a present indicative middle passive form. And the tie is passive. Middle passive construction from the primary active personal ending chart. You understand what I'm saying? Connecting vowel epsilon right there. And so that's just the deal. Okay, ana krinetai, ana krinetai, ana krino. From ana krino, I discern. So you understand our condition. I mean, our condition was was almost hopeless. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, we were a natural man. Okay, psukikas, psukikas. You understand what I'm saying? It's not that bad if you get used to it. Psukikas. I mean, you know. I mean, we were we were natural. The natural, uh, however, the natural man. And this doesn't mean just man. I mean, it means man and woman. Also, y'all ain't gonna get away with it. Y'all at the pool of the of the a female department. You understand what I'm saying? Man, on anthropos, man. Adam or Ish in Hebrew, you understand what I'm saying? Probably in the in the in the Hebrew Bible has Ish or Adam there. Okay. 
that's our condition. And so this idea that, uh, that, that Jesus didn't have any flesh, well, you're going to have to say that, that nobody else had any flesh. That's the problem with using that text that everybody's in the pool. Now, I'm going to play uh, devil's advocate now. Because if I was a Jehovah's Witness, I'll, I'll be a very powerful one. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? By God's grace. So I don't know if I'm doing Christianity a little bit harm, but just in case somebody does it, it's better to do it first over here than, than first over there. Let's get back to it. 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 5, you understand? Let me just put that over there. Let's get verse 16. And I'm going to tell you what they can do. Now, probably they can do it more if they hear the study and then they're going to use it. But we have to take that chance. We're going to have to take that chance. Let me get the English, though. Forget about the Greek for now. Okay? Let me just get the Greek. I mean, uh, the, the English. You understand? So let's just say, let me get an NIV. Uh, you understand? Let me get a. Uh, Where's where's Second Corinthians at? Second Timothy, Beta Timothy, if you will. Now these called Vita, you know. And uh, let's get chapter five, and then chapter sixteen is here. And this is what I'm gonna do. Okay, this is gonna be the last part right here, but we we're gonna have to get ready for this. Let's just read it and then come up with a sort of devil's advocate uh, for the witnesses. You understand what I'm saying? So from now on, we recognize, okay, no one from a uh, from a worldly point of view. I like that. I like that translation, though. From a worldly point of view, though we once regarded Christ in this way, in a worldly point of view, we do so no longer. In a worldly point of view, right? that answers everything right there. So you could just bring it to the NIV, but I'm gonna still, I'm gonna still this, do this anyway, even though I might be doing the JW a favor. But so what? That's why you have this ministry to answer them, and we have to take that chance. Now, if this translation wasn't here, which is a good translation, let's get back to uh, something that's not like that, though. That's more harder for us. If they were using the NASB or something like that or whatever the case may be. You understand what I'm saying? So let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 16. You understand what I'm saying? That's just a deal. So let's go to a toughie one. That was an easy one because it kind of spat out everything for us to to know. So that, 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 forget about that. That's that's that, those are the those are the those are the sort of training wheels. You understand what I'm saying? Let's get something without the training wheels. Verse 16 says, therefore, from now on, we recognize no one according, Greek word kata, according to the flesh, Greek word sarks, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, Greek word sarks, yet now, Greek word noon, we know him in this way no longer. Now... <clears throat> Let's play devil's advocate. Let's just add a little bit to the Bible. Let's just add a little bit. This is what I'm trying to say. Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one who is dead, who, who doesn't have any flesh any longer, according to the flesh, because they ain't got no flesh. Even though we have a known Christ, who doesn't have a body now, according to the flesh, yeah, now we uh, know him in this way no longer, you see, meaning having flesh. But getting back to this, I did them a favor. Therefore, meaning the witnesses, therefore, from now on, we recognize no one who is dead according to the flesh. I had to add there, like the witnesses would do. Uh, uh, no one, it's not, Angelo, it's not, I understand what you're trying to say, Angelo, that, that we're in trouble if we <laughs> if we say that we don't know Jesus according to the flesh because because then we're going to have to recognize everybody in that way that they don't have any flesh either. As a matter of fact, I'm talking to you, and I ain't, I ain't got no flesh. That's, that's a little bit too deep for us, Angelo. It's a little bit, little bit too deep for tears. So I'm going to do a little switcheroo on you, Angelo. I mean, it doesn't really mean 
you know, uh, no one, that we don't recognize no one to the flesh who's alive, who's living now, just we don't recognize nobody who's who's dead to have any uh, longer f uh, future hope of a fleshly resurrection and stuff like that. You understand what I'm saying? And, 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 and Christ is, uh, goes into the same pool of thought. No pun intended. Worldly point of view. Because he ain't got no flesh. But I'm just trying to answer Angelo from the tower. I mean, you just you just catch us, you know, uh, napping a little bit. I mean, you you just say that, you know, if we think of Jesus in that way, that he ain't got no flesh, we got to think of everybody else. He ain't got no flesh either. But I got something for you, Angelo, that actually I heard in your recording that I could use against you in the church. You punk. How shall you neglect so great salvation? How shall you escape if you neglect so great salvation? Our God is a consuming fire. Don't play around with God, man. Stop it. You understand know what I mean? It's a, it's a dangerous thing you're doing, man. You know, the most hated woman in the world, according to the 1960s and 70s and probably even 80s, was uh, um, Madeline O'Hara. She was breathing out her dragon threatenings against the church, cursing against us and stuff like that, cursing, cursing at uh, at Jesus, sticking, singing out her middle finger to God in a in a in a cartoon in a storm, saying "f you" to God and stuff like that. It's not me; it's her. You know, taking prayer out of school in nineteen around nineteen sixty three, going to the Supreme Court, didn't even want to hear the Bible being presented, the Book of Genesis presented in outer space by the astronauts. She was a dirty a scumbag of a woman. Let's just say, face it, though. Well, she was murdered in 1995. I think she knows better now. You understand what I'm saying? Don't give me this hocus pocus that her mother didn't want her, and that's why she grew up to be like that. Because, listen, a lot of people's uh, parents didn't want them, and they don't grow up, you know, denying God, denying the Bible, denying the church, and sticking out that finger to God. You understand what I'm saying? There's no excuse. They'll give you this hocus pocus about the woman that she got a whole bunch of excuses. No, she's in shield. And she's waiting to be uh, thrown into the lake of fire. You know what I'm saying? That's just the deal. I think she knows better to shut up now. She ain't got no body, but that body will be raised from the dead one day. The body that she had, okay, stinking up the joint, stinking up, te stinking up Texas, and daring to debate Walter Martin, a man of God. Didn't even let him speak sometimes. You know what I'm saying? That's gone. See, she can't do the same thing. That's what it means not to have any activity. It doesn't mean that you're not gonna you're gonna be annihilated and stuff like that. She ain't gonna have that type of work anymore. Being an atheist and, and an atheist organization in Texas and stuff like that, there ain't gonna be no more planning in Shell. But she can't plan and get up and do the same thing. Just like Trump, if he dies on he he ain't gonna be able to to go where he wants to go with the Secret Service and 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 uh, and his limousines and stuff like that, going after court going to court to court after court to court campaigning and stuff all that stuff is going to stop one day there's no threat I'm talking about the Bible preacher, preacher and teacher that's going to stop one day he's not going to do the same you know same damn thing that's going to stop that's going to stop one day man you can't do what it was you, you there's no more planning there's no more work there's no more activity the same activity that you used to do here you know uh, you know and, and being a and being a um a atheist or being a dictator or being whatever the case may be being ruler of china or russia whatever korea or north korea by the way or whatever the case may be being nero putting everybody to the fire and stuff like that that's over There's no more planning, no more work, no more, no more, no more activity. That 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 sort of activity is gone. We're not talking about that, though. We're not talking about the resurrection. This is not talking about the resurrection, man. This is talking about knowledge of persons, of people, and of trace that we used to think about them in a certain way, according to the world's a point of view. A good translation by the NIV. And, we, and since we have been given the mind of Christ, we no longer lip, look upon, okay, those persons and those sorts in, 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 in that way. And that's and it's especially true, and I was going to mention this, and that's, that's really it for now. I was going to mention this, um, that, you know, 
Also, let me just mention this before I mention that, that um, the word for flesh, okay, stands for the sinful nature sometimes. Okay, it doesn't stand for the body body of Christ all the time and stuff like that. And, and, and bodies, just bodies. It stands for sometimes, okay, uh, 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 carnal nature. The mind of the flesh, the body of sin and death. You understand what I'm saying? It's, it's, it has nothing to do with the flesh of Jesus, that we, that we don't recognize Jesus having any flesh. It has nothing to do. It, it, he, he even gave imperatives, though, to the disciples. He gave three imperatives, okay? Uh, uh, let me see what it is. Oh, what a PC. I'm doing it by mind. la fesate. That's an imperative. The, the te is an imperative morphine. That's a mood of command to touch him and to see him. Idete. The te is also an imperative morphine there in, in the first word of Luke uh, chapter uh, 24, verse 39. We were just looking at it. How can he even give imperatives and stuff like that to the disciples if he doesn't even have a body? Don't tell me that he conjured up the body because that's tampering with state's evidence. That's, that's fraudery. He's saying it is I myself, you know, adjectival intensive altosis there. Okay, ego a me altos. The, the altos, the third person person, a pronoun from the altos paradigm, is actually acting like an adjectival insensitive. Not an identical, but an adjectival insensitive. You understand what I'm saying? He's on myself. But how can it be him himself if it's not even his body? So what you, you're doing is you're charging God with fraud. Char you know, uh, tampering with state's evidence. That's just the deal. That's what you're, that's what, that's what, that's what you're doing. You're saying that God replaced the body of Jesus? Why? It's the greatest piece of evidence in recorded history. And so I, I, I get that. I get into that. I already got into Luke chapter uh, 24, verse 39, in conjunction with uh, John chapter 2, verse 19, the genetic opposition and, uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, um, Alton referring back to Naan and stuff like that. Uh, the it is very important in that passage. The same it that was, that he commanded them to destroy, you know, is the same it that was going to be raised up from the dead. It's a one to one correspondence, and I actually used, okay, First uh, Corinthians chapter fifteen, verses forty two and forty three to like, to collaborate that claim, minus seeing the 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 corruption stuff and all that stuff, because that has to do with us and not with Jesus. His body didn't see any decay, the aphatata and grief or corruption in Hebrew shachat. You understand what I'm saying? But let's get back to this stuff. Therefore, and that goes before. You just can't read this apart from the therefore. You just can't read this and, and, and that's it. You have to read before what went, what went before. Therefore, the, the witnesses don't do that. They read everything. They just give you one verse of scripture and they don't even know if you tested them. Like if they had a gun to their head, you understand what I'm saying? They wouldn't even know what verse, why verse 4 was written because they wouldn't even know uh, why uh, um, Ezekiel chapter 18 was written according to verses 1 and 2. Wouldn't even know. I'm not going to give it away. You don't even know right now if you're from the tower. You don't know why uh, Ezekiel chapter 18 was born. I'm just saying. Read verses 1 and 2 and then you shall find out. Therefore, from now on, we recognize uh, it says over here, we recognize no a one According to the flesh. Also, again, I say it again and again and again. I don't think you have any flesh. We don't recognize anyone according to the flesh. Forget about uh, 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 what follows after that. But if 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 you're saying that we don't recognize Jesus according to the flesh, meaning not according to our mind, but according that he don't have a body, well, you're going to have to say that everybody else in his passions doesn't have a body either, including you. We don't recognize any, any no one according to the flesh. That, that's talking about their flesh either. Also, okay. Forgetting my English here in the Philippines, you understand what I'm saying? It's a disgrace. Thank God they don't speak Greek. Because then I wouldn't know any Greek. Goodness gracious. So people in cults and sects and false religions and stuff like that are really exhibit A when they become saved. You know why? Because they really had an anti, I mean, I never had an anti-Christ view. I never had an anti-God view. I never had an anti-Holy Spirit view. I, I grew up in a Catholic church. So 
but really the exhibits, the people who are really, really chosen vessels to get out of these things, these cults and sex and stuff like that, you understand what I'm saying? Like Obed Vargas and people like that or whatever the case may be, chosen vessels unto God in that sense, they really had an enmity, okay, uh, toward Jesus. They really had a, an enmity against uh, the children of God. They called them the, the, the swine class. You know, people that comes in, they come that comes from uh, cults and sects like that, and then uh, are false religions that are violent religions. And you know what the ones I'm talking about? They really not only had a, a bad view of the church, but of Israel, according to their point of view, according to the worldly understanding. And so what I'm saying. And not only that, they had a very warped view of Jesus. That Jesus didn't die on the cross, that he wasn't raised from the dead, and blah, blah, blah. It goes on and on and on. I mean, you know, so, so the, the carnal mind is enmity with God. These people are enemies of the cross of Christ and, and enemies of the church. Saul, I think, is exhibit number one who wrote this. And with this, I'll let you go. He was breathing out threatenings and 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 slaughter and things like that against the kick against the church. So his understanding, his point of view, had to be changed. I mean, yeah, he had to be born again, just like we all. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, he 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 thought that the that the that the that the that the Christianity was a fraud, and then um and then he he counted Christ as an imposter. If you read verse 16, again, in, in that context, in that light, then you understand that he, he, he wasn't talking about, you know, that he didn't recognize no one having flesh, and then including Jesus. Now. He was raised from the dead. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says that the... the that there is flesh to be to be uh, cloaked with, you understand? Know this this corruptible will put on immortality. The incorruptible, incorruptible, uh, incor this mortal shall put on immortality. Put over immortality, over the uh, the mortality. This corruptible will put on incorruption. We're gonna have flesh, whether you like it or not. The id that is sown is the id that is raised. That's just a fact. Y'all have to wake up and smell the, the sanka, the coffee. You understand what I'm saying? If you don't like sanka, then get Bustelo from a Spanish story. You understand what I'm saying? That's just a deal. Speditai, egetitai. Those are the Greek words that are found and recorded in those two verses of Scripture. It is sown, speditai. It is raised, egetitai. You know what I'm saying? That's just a deal. In the passive voice, you know, tie, you know, my side tie. Yeah, the tie there is a, is, a, is a personal ending from the master personal ending. Chat. Ah, but I don't know personal ending. So why are you telling me who Jesus is if you don't know any Greek or Hebrew? What's shachat? What's that? What's that? What's that word shachat? Oh, let me look it up in my lexicon. Yeah, geek. Come on, man. It's, it means, it means... It means decay. Well, Jesus didn't say any decay. The Ephathara or Lo uh, Shachat in Hebrew. No, 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 no decay, no corruption. You understand what I'm saying? Get with it. This is not talking about Jesus' flesh. It's not talking about everybody else's flesh because that means ain't nobody got no flesh, including you. Come on, man. How you gonna put your pants on this morning if you ain't got no flesh to go to the tower? How you gonna put your skirts on if you ain't got no flesh, girly? Come on. You ain't got no flesh, really? That's news to me. Maybe you're a ghost. I'm just saying. You've been uh, looking at too many Alfred Hitchcock, you know, ghost stories lately. You know what I'm saying? All right, so what did we learn? Well, we learned that the, that the Watchtower and Bible Church Society are a whole bunch of frauds. Just, just, just stop right there. That's what we learned. They're frauds. 
But we already knew that. Magic Wheat and Guard, Great Pyramid, even the zombie, even the zombie Prophet and Bible, a World Wide Tour that never exists and that never exists. It's like Gilligan, Gilligan's Island all over again. It's like the it's like Lovey and, and Mr. Howe. Come on, man. Millions now living will never die and they're all dead. Ah, oh, well, the prophet of God, you know, 1972 on April Fool's Day. Come on, you can't make it up, man. April Fool's. It's just a joke. Your shoes are untied. Oh, April Fool's. Well, the prophet of God. Oh, April Fool's again. Come on, man. Can't trust these people. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were going to return and never did. And they sold Besserine to the house of the princess. And then Rutherford died of cancer in that house. I mean, you know, I, I don't I don't know what happened. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jacob never showed up. What was the deal? They were late to the party? What was the deal? And then you only had two Cadillacs in that, in that, at, at that mansion. What, what, Abraham couldn't drive? Uh, Isaac was too li busy laughing to get his license, and somebody stole Jacob's license away from him? I, I, you know, for a bowl of soap? Well, what's the deal? Come on, man. It's like Joe Biden over there. Like I said before, come on, man. Come on, man. Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one according to the flesh. Okay, no one ain't got no flesh. And that's news to me. So in the NBA Finals, everybody's going up and down the basketball court in about a week. Now, I think that, uh, I don't know, who, who's going to win that final? So who cares? It's not even the Super Bowl. I mean, Boston against Dallas, I mean, oh goodness, good God. Good luck to the ratings, I'll tell you that. Hope my Knicks are there uh, next year, you know what I'm saying? But be that as it may, so they, well, when somebody dunks the ball, they ain't got no flesh. Oops, he missed a free throw. I, I guess he he did it, because he, he missed it because he ain't got no flesh. The coach, the coaches don't have no flesh. The people in the pews ain't got no flesh, or you can't shake their hand. Nobody ain't got no flesh. It's like the body snatchers all over again. You understand what I'm saying? Who are these JWs? Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one has a body. That's what it's saying, according to the witness, according to the flesh. Now, even though uh, we have uh, known Christ according to his flesh, according to the flesh, yet now we uh, know him not to have any flesh in this way any longer. Come on, man, does it say that? Why you got to insert? I mean, instead of doing, uh, instead of being in a tobacco company like Phyllis and Mars, I think you should have uh, sold uh, certs, candies, you know, to freshen up, your, freshen up your breath a little bit. You understand what I'm saying? Man, because that doctor stinks at the tower. Because you're always inserting things, no pun intended. You can't twist this to your own destruction. You can't say that nobody ain't got no flesh. I don't know what to say. I really don't know what else to say, man. I mean, I, I, I really don't know. But they can't use this no longer against me. I'll tell you that right now. And they can't use this against you any longer. No pun intended. This Angelo Quinone is giving glory to the God of Jesus. Oh, God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And that means Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were very much alive at the time that Jesus said those words. He didn't say I was the okay, uh, 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 the God of the um, of the living. He said I am. He used the Greek word, okay, ain. It's still Amy. It's still Amy, but you know, in the imperfect tense, ain. Eta and new. You understand what I'm saying? Secondary personal ending new. In the chart of nothing, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> new sigma nothing. Ah, uh, mente, uh, what is it? Mente, uh, nu. That's the, that's the paradigm for the secondary act of personal ending, uh, side of the chart. 
and the passives, the secondary passives are what? Uh, main sa ta, methaste unta. I mean, the witnesses wouldn't know that if, if, if their life depended on it. I'm just saying. Methaste unta. What's that? How that? How you spell the unta? What a? What a? No, what a, I'm a crying you punk. That's just the deal. Is Angelo Quinones giving glory to the God of Yisra El? Please, um, subscribe to my channel. Please give me a thumbs up and please leave a comment on the screen. I'm just laughing. I mean, I don't know how anybody can darken the door of a watchtower. I mean, they left like rats off a ship in 1975. You know what I'm saying? When that false prophecy. Went to pack. I mean, people ran off their credit cards. People stopped paying their bills. People who <laughs> sold their homes and gave the money to the tower. It's like Ananias and Sapphira is all over again. You understand what I'm saying? People uh, got unengaged. Oh, Jesus was going to come. Well, I got to marry this guy. Well, I got to marry this girl for for why? People left their farms, their farming and stuff like that, sold their homes, left their colleges, closed their stores, sold everything to the tower. So the tower got all your money and you got nothing in return because you're still the other sheep. It's just a deal. See? And then you do it again in 1988. You never learn, don't you? And they never learn. What's wrong with the tower? Why do they hate Jesus so much? Why y'all hate Jesus so much at the tower? What did Jesus ever do to you? Think about it. Think about it in a week, man, because now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. How shall ye escape if you neglect? So great salvation. Our God is a consuming fire. May you hold the truths of scripture above anyone or anything else. Including your pamphlets and magazines at the tower. Not only at the tower. But any other cult or sect or false religion. That has a worldly opinion of everybody including the Lord Jesus Christ Amen Alright, welcome uh, back guys for this appendix appendix number one, probably the only appendix in this um, that has to do with the study now we saw uh, in the body of the study, no pun intended, that Jehovah's Witnesses or any other cult or sect or false religion that uses, aka all right, uh, Second Corinthians chapter five verse sixteen against uh, the fleshly resurrection of Jesus, okay, you understand what I mean? Uh, has done so without any merit or without any scriptural support. Because the first part of that verse, and, and I don't have it there because I'm, I'm going to something else, actually talks about, you know, other people, according to them, not having flesh, if you really get down to it. So we know that, um, you know, that people walking around have flesh, okay, that's that, and Jesus was raised bodily, okay, ta uh, somatica, anastasis, tu yesu. Uh, Christu Hemon Kuriu. Okay, the bodily resurrection of our Lord and Savior, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Savior is not there in the, in the, in 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 my uh, uh, subtitle, but anyway, maybe I could sneak that in there. And so that's just the deal. So that's the subtitle of our um, current series, aka Anastasis. Uh, Anastasis is not agnostic. That's don't think that's another Greek word. Anastasis means resurrection. Anastasis. The Anastasis, the, the, the great Anastasis series, the, the great bodily resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ series. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? And um, I had to put this out there because, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses like to use things to attack, okay, the resurrection, uh, 
uh, either the resurrection of the just or the resurrection of the unjust or the resurrection of, of, of Jesus, that he had a body. Now, I'm not going to go through that again, meaning, um, you know, what I've studied about the resurrection of Jesus. I just have to say that, you know, the resurrection is the cast, the resurrection of Jesus is the capstone of Christianity. Remove it and all else crumbles. It is a singular doctrine that elevated Christianity above all the pagan religions of the world. Okay, end quote. That doesn't originate with me. I just I'm I'm just borrowing it. But let's get back to this. Let's let's get back to um, you know, our our study via an appendix. Now I want to look at the word flesh, okay, Greek word sarx, stem sark. Okay, I want to look at that because it is used in many ways. It's used, okay, physically, you know, somebody's flesh. The flesh of birds, the flesh of uh, animals, the, the flesh of beasts, or whatever the case may be. First Corinthians chapter 15. Different kind of flesh, you understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> but the word sarx, okay, can also mean sinful nature. It could also mean the sinful mind in that, in, the, in that sense. Now, I could give you thousands of thousands of thousands of occurrences like that in the New Testament. Okay, there are about 100, uh, Mel says there are, about, uh, there are over 138,000, okay, Greek words, either repeated or whatever the case may be in the New Testament, and over f uh, 5,400 different Greek words in total, okay? And many, many passages of scriptures um, are located in 27 books. Okay, so I mean, this is just I could, I could give you a lot of a lot of evidence to prove my point versus uh, the JW. I'm not going to do so. I'm just going to give you one. You know, so I'm not going to boil it down to this. You know what I'm saying? Romans chapter eight, verse seven. And Romans chapter eight, you have to understand, is a miniature Bible in itself. It is the greatest chapter in all of the Bible. It is the greatest chapter in all of the Bible. It hits all the topics. Okay, so that's just it. I mean, there are great chapters in the Bible. But necessarily, it doesn't mean that they're the greatest chapter in the Bible. Okay, I mean, you got the, the great uh, faith chapter, uh, Hebrews 11, great love chapter, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, the great gift uh, chapters, you know, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12. Uh, I mean, you got great chapters of the Bible. Great chapters of the Bible. But let me give me one passage of scripture, verse 7 of chapter 8 of Romans. Okay, it says, because, and this is the NASB, I believe, because the mind, because the mind set on the flesh is hostile toward God. For it does not subject itself to the law of God. For it is not even able, and probably doing the times there also, but you know, we're not going to look at it, uh, to do so. Now, this, this is the deal. That's, that's, that was our condition. That was our condition. Our condition was that we had, okay, set our minds on the things of the flesh. The things of the flesh, the, 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 the um, like I said, I wasn't in, 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 a, in, a, in a group that denied Jesus' deity or denied the Holy Spirit or denied, denied the Trinity. I got to say something in order, no, no pun intended, right now. I'm not a Catholic, I'm an evangelical a Christian. I meant to say in the body of this uh, study that I was a Catholic when I was a young boy. And when I was born again, okay, in 19, around 1990, and, and it's 2024 right now, going to 2025, you know, it's, uh, the, it's, May of the, it's, it's June of this year. Um, you know, when I'm 59 years old, I, I got saved when I was you know, a young man, you know, when I was, uh, what, when I was uh, 25. So, you know, um, I was a Catholic, but now I'm an evangelical, uh, you know, with a special capital E. You know, I'm a B, C, T, E, S. You understand what I'm saying? Born again, Christian, Trinitarian, evangelical saint. By the blood of Jesus Christ and his resurrection, I am what I am. You know, First Corinthians chapter 15. You understand what I'm saying? Not because of me, not because of my works, but because of the grace of Christ calling me out of darkness and bringing um, uh, me into his marvelous light. You know what I'm saying? So that's just a deal. But let, let's get back to this because I want to look at the word flesh. Okay. Now I could have read a lot of verses here. Or just read on your own uh, Romans chapter 8 and you'll see the, the deal. It's sort of like a commentary, you understand, on Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16, the verse that Jehovah's Witnesses like to use or misuse or, or abuse. You understand what I mean? 
Flesh doesn't mean flesh all the time. Now, they used it. Let's just put it like this, because I don't think I did this in, in the body of the study. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16, is used by the witnesses to try to prove that Jesus doesn't have any flesh, that he doesn't have any materiality attached to him, that he didn't raise, that he didn't rise in a, a physical literal, tangible, fleshly body. Okay? End quote. That's from the tower. But we all know that he has a body because he said, um, you know, for a spirit does not have flesh and bone, Greek word uh, sarka, uh, flesh, and bone, astea in the plural, like you see me have. Now, he said, uh, uh, see my hands, okay, idete, uh, the hands of me and the feet of me. And the Greek is actually, okay, tas geras, tas geras uh, mu, kai, don't forget the kai, okay, uh, tus padas mu. You know, see, he did that, and that's an imperative mood. That's the mood of command. You know what I'm saying? And also, he said to touch him later on in this, in that, uh, in that verse of scripture, verse 39 of chapter 24 of the Gospel of Catalukan. He said, "Thale fesate." There you go. That's a, the the sa is an aris, uh first aris, uh morphine, and the te is an imperative morphine. You understand what I'm saying? And it means to it's, it's, it's an imperative, is an imperative, it's a mood of command. Uh, you know, touch, uh, uh, touch, and see. So he gave them three commands to touch him. So if he didn't have a body, how can he do that? Don't give me this hocus pocus that he materialized the body. You 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 you're saying that you know that Jesus is a fraud because he said it is I myself. He didn't say it's a copy of my body or the Father gave me this body to display to you guys that that I right now ha actually have a body. No, it was his birthday suit in on display. But I'm not gonna go through that because the thing is that you know time is on the essence, and I and I you know I already gave you a big big study of um you know which which I linked the the two uh, scriptures uh, together. And then I set them apart and looked at each other, uh, you know, separately. So I put them together, you know, John chapter 2, verse 19, and then uh, Luke chapter 24, verse 39. I, I looked at it together, very long study, and then I looked at it, you know, separately. So, you know, so if you want to look at that, just look at the, you know, the uh, Anastasis folder, uh, you know, the bodily resurrection of... Uh, Jesus Christ, our Lord. I mean, you know, this is, this is, I think it's the greatest thing on YouTube. Not because I did it, it's just because there's nobody doing it, you know? So that's just a deal. We need more people to talk about it. Now, let's go to the Greek, though, however. Okay, and let's uh, check out uh, the word for sarks, and let's learn about that word, okay? Let's look at the semantic range, okay? Let's look at the semantic domain, or I call it the semantic pool. Let's go to, let me see here. Let's go to Romans. You understand? Let me see where Romans is at. Right over here. Okay. Romans chapter 8. And I believe I was in verse 7. And it says over here because, and that's uh, Diati. Diati. Uh, the Ta. That's a, that's a Nura article in the singular because it's Omicron. Mind. Okay. Fra Nema. And that's the same. Uh, uh, word recorded for the um the Holy Spirit having a mind, and then uh, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I guess it's the same word also, tagged by uh, fifty four twenty seven, and I spelled out phi ro. Phi is a ph letter in Greek, equal to the pe in Hebrew when it's soft. So that's just the deal. Okay, so phi ro. Omicron, nowadays called Omicron with the acute marker. Nu, nowadays called Ni. Eta, nowadays called Eta. Mu, nowadays called uh, Mi, sometimes pronounced Mu. And Alpha, okay? Of the, and that's taste, that's the genitive uh, case there, the case of limitation as the kind. Flesh, sark, sarcos. Actually, that's in the genitive. The Omicron and Sigma is pointing that out. And when you take that away, then you have the stem, the pure stem or the root Actually, okay, because stems could be, you know, nicely used for uh, verbs. So this is a, this is a noun. So I'll say root. Sark is this is the root here. You understand what I'm saying? 
is uh, hostile, as hostility actually says over here, echthra, echthra, hostility. I mean, that's a powerful word. It's just it's hostility, it's an enmity, it's a war, okay, toward God. Toward God. Look at that, that's a sad state of affairs. Ace Theon, okay? Now, is that a... Uh, now, that's a preposition, so it doesn't need the article for it to be definite. I understand that, but the witnesses don't understand that. You understand what I'm saying? That a noun says Dan, Dan a Greek noun said Dan Wallace could be definite. Uh, there's ten, 10 different ways that a Greek noun can be definite without an article. So Dan Wallace and his treatment of the article. In his book uh, entitled Greek Beyond the Basics, Mounts did okay, uh, Basics of Biblical Greek, which is impeccable. So you put the two violins together and you're on your way. You understand what I'm saying? I, 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 you know, I, you're on your way out of the tower. You understand what I'm saying? A.K.A. Okay. Uh, Theon. And so do you say, um, you know, uh, toward a god? There ain't no article uh, it will be Ton because it's, it's Theon. Ain't no article Ton here. Okay, the full paradigm for God, okay, for the word God in, in Greek, uh, uh, Theos, in the different uh, forms and constructions is theos, theu, theo, theon, throw in there the for free, vocative. Ha theos can be vocative also. See uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8 and uh, 10, 7. And in the plural, it changes completely the meaning of, of, of God with a capital G when you go to the plural. That, 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 that's, that's, that's the uniqueness of the theos paradigm. Okay? So that's just the deal. Now, uh, by nature, it, cha it changes the nature of what you're talking about or who you're talking about. You understand what I'm saying? They oi, they own, and they own is not even a Greek. Is not even in the Greek New Testament. Anyway, says Murray J. Harris in his book entitled uh, uh, "Jesus is God." Very wonderful book. I don't. I don't hold to everything in, in that book, but it's, it's a very good book. You should pick it up. Uh, Jesus as God by Murray J. Harris. If they still sell it, maybe they sell it on Amazon.com. You understand what I'm saying? I left a copy of it in the States. Um, okay, so uh, Theoi, Theon, Theois, uh, Theus. You understand what I'm saying? That's the full paradigm for the word Theos. And then and then you got the, the Thea paradigm, the goddess paradigm. Thea, I probably, I've never seen it before, but it's probably something like this. I could just make it up myself. Uh, Thea, uh, Theos. Uh, Thea with a Neota subscript and then Theon with an Alpha. And two of those appear in uh, Praxis Apostle on the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, for the goddess Artemis or Diana, if you want to call it like that. You understand what I'm saying? So that's just the deal. Now, um, let's get back to this though. Toward God, hostility toward God. All right, so uh, to again is a dative article in the singular, okay, from the tote to side of the paradigm for Gar. That's supposed positive, I believe, the law. And that's uh, namo, namo there in the dative. For the law of God of Theu, not, and that's uch from u, it is subject, okay, hupa ta setai. Now, uh, that's the same Greek word found and recorded. For Jesus being subject to uh, Mary and Joseph, okay, and uh, around, you know, around 51, uh, verse 51 or 52 of uh, the Gospel of Luke on chapter 2. And it's the same Greek word found of him in the future being subject to, the, to God the Father, which we don't have a problem of. He did become man. So man is, is subject uh, uh, to God. You understand what I'm saying? So there's no, there's no problem there. Now, hupataso, you got the double sigma there in the present, which is which is kind of regular meaning double consonants, like lambda and sigma and tau and stuff like that in the present. Uh, then it says, can it be? Can it is dunatai and dunatai again. As a matter of fact, dunatai appears in a famous passage of scripture that um, no one has the, obil the ability to come to... Uh, to uh, to the Father, or to Christ, unless uh, the Father draw him, draws him, and that's in uh, verse forty-four of chapter six of the Gospel of Ioannin, the Gospel according to John. But um, I don't see the word flesh here, though. Okay, let me see. Maybe I maybe I may have skipped it. Let me go back. It says because the okay the mind. That's not the word for flesh. Of the let me see, flesh. Okay, it is there. 
So let's let's look at the semantic range. Uh, tag by forty five sixty one. Uh, and, but let's look at the spelling first again. Okay, is sarcos here? The paradigm for sarx will be something like this. Okay, I did see it. Sarx, sarcas, sarki, sarka, and then uh, and then sarkis, sarcon, sarxi, and sarcas. Okay, that's just the deal. Sarka will be in the singular though. So you don't have to worry about the kasi, you know, too much. You only see it two times in that that uh, paradigm, which means model, by the way. Paradigm means model. It's someone's philosoph philosophical deep contemplation of something spelled out, in other words. Okay, it's, it's a very deep term, which I'm not going to get into now. So a paradigm, we just leave it as an example or a model of Greek words when it comes to the Greek. Okay, you understand? Flesh. Uh, sarcas and 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 in the Greek uh, a root here, okay, is of the word is sark, sigma alpha rho kappa, okay. So you could famously just take away, shave away the genitive endings in the singular and the plural and come up with the stem, okay. That's all. It's just like pantas. I mean, what's the stem of pantas? We'll just shave away the the genitive singular there or even panton and you come up with the stem pant. So why is it why isn't it pont in the lexicon? Well, because you know you add a a nominative uh, a sigma to pont and it becomes pont, and then so the, the 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 liquid and the dental drop off, and you're left with pus. That's that's just the way it is. But let's look at the word for flesh. Let's just look at the, as at the deal. Again, uh, tagged by forty five sixty one. I gave you the spelling already. Parts of speech, okay, is a noun, feminine noun, by the way. And let's look at the definition. It says over here, flesh, body, uh, human nature, materiality, kindred. Now, if you go to the usage side of this uh, uh pool of information you have over here carnally minded carnally minded fleshly minded you understand what i'm saying and you see the various translations now what i want to stress okay is that the word for flesh in second corinthians chapter um five or sixteen it's the same word okay sarks I think that the NIV, again, and I'm going to read it again, has a royal translation at this point. And I'm going to close again with this, okay, because I, I, don't, I don't see anything uh, too much better than that. And so that's just the deal. So let's go back again and see, okay, Second uh, Corinthians chapter 5 and verse uh, 16. Okay, so that's just the deal. So we'll close with that so we can refresh our minds. And, and, and give the... Um, I just lost it. Give the NIV to, you know, uh, some 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 um, people at the tower, they don't have a problem with the NIV. Mark from Missouri doesn't have it. He loves the NIV. He says he said it himself. I wish I could put the clip, but I can't because you know, I have to I have to um, get it from the digital recorder and stuff like that. But he says, I love the NIV, end quote. So they didn't have no problem with it. Verse 16. So uh, from now on, we regard... Okay, no one, <laughs> no one from a worldly point of view. That's what it means. Not that nobody has any flesh. Okay? But we, 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 you know, the Apostle Paul says we regard no one from a worldly point of view, though we once regarded Christ in this way. We do, meaning with a worldly point of view. We do so no longer. Why? Because we're spiritual. We're spiritually minded. Remember when Jesus said, who do men say I am? And a whole bunch of people were saying, you know, in front of him, you know, the disciples. Well, some people say Elijah. Some, some people say, you know, John the Baptist or that. You know, some people say this and that. That's worldly. That's worldly opinion. That came from the Pharisees and Sadducees or whatever the case may be. That's what people are saying. 
That's the world. We know that you're a teacher uh, that come from that came from God, sent from God, or whatever the case may be. Uh, found and recorded in uh, John chapter three. That was worldly. Jesus said that was worldly to such a degree. You need to be born again. You need a new nature. You're thinking me in fleshly terms. I'm not a teacher sent by God merely. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I am God sent to teach. Say Christ. So you see all these these opinions about uh, uh, Jesus, and that's easy to pick up. But how about the opinions of you know what human nature is supposed to be? The chief end of man, says the Bible, basically in a nutshell, is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. End quote. But the people don't have that opinion of of of, of humanity. What do they What do they have? Well, they think of man as just a an animal. They think of man as just, uh, you know, as someone who's just here today and gone tomorrow. You understand know what I'm saying? There's no accountability, you know, towards God because they're the enmity towards God. They're fleshly minded, you understand know what I'm saying? They have their mind on earthly things. So they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't look at a human being and say that this is, this is, this is, this, this person made in the image of God. No, they're just, they're just here. And then they have a low opinion of the kirk of the church. And so, I mean, that's, that's even worse. Forget about, you know, regular uh, mankind, you know, not the new humanity that, that, that Jesus created, you know, through the new birth. You understand what I'm saying? By the spirit. I mean, they think. I mean, they they think of the church as just a just a, just a somewhere to go and it just you know on holidays and stuff like that. But you know, not that it's an organism uh, by God. It's not not that it's the body of Christ. You know, people don't look at the church and say, "Well, that's the body of Christ." See, they have a low opinion of the Kirk. They have a low opinion of the church. That's enmity. That's according to the flesh. The Apostle Paul, like I said before, in a royal example, I mean, thought that, that Jesus was an imposter and that he was a fraud. But he doesn't have those views uh, anymore. And he was, he was, he was, he was thinking that, that, that the, church, the church, you know, the Apostle Paul was against uh, God, against the law, against Israel, against everything that's holy in the Old Testament. And he had to be slapped down. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Wait a minute, persecuting you? I mean, I'm persecuting the church, but that, that's you? Who art thou, Lord? You're persecuting me. That's my body. That's my bride. See, but the, but people don't see the, the, the... I'm talking about the organ... I'm talking about... The invisible body of Christ. You understand what I'm saying? I'm talking about... I'm talking about not just people in the pew. You understand what I'm saying? Not everybody is a Christian person. And and, and 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 sometimes the low opinions that people have against the Kirk or, or against the church, are, you know, are true. We're not acting like the Kirk. We're not acting like a like the church. You understand what I'm saying? Ten percent of the evangelical church in the 1990s said that 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 Jesus didn't raise up bodily from the dead. That's two hundred of every uh, two thousand people in the church. That's too much. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. You understand what I'm saying? Be careful of the of the of the leaven of the Sadducees and the Pharisees. That's what Jesus said. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. But we don't have those views of 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 um especially of Christian people anymore. We don't. And we don't have the view of Jesus that, that he's just there, but he's not the Lord of my life. You understand what I'm saying? Because I can't get away with that. I didn't have no enmity against the Trinity, but I was living like there was there was no God, though. So I'm not going to get away with it, though. I mean, even though I didn't have any enmity against the Bible, I wasn't I wasn't rejecting it. I wasn't a Jehovah's Witness or nothing like that. But still, I was living like that, that there was no God. Just saying, that's the truth. I can't get away with that. So this is a, an appendix. Actually, um, we learn really. What the Greek word sarx is all about. It means it could be translated flesh or body. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, the root is sarc. 
the paradigm, we saw the paradigm, you know, uh, we didn't actually see it, but you heard it. Okay, Sarx, uh, Sarkas, Sarki. Now, Sarx is nominative. Um, a Sarkas is genitive. Uh, Sarki is dative. Data singular, Sarki. You can't you can't subscribe the iota underneath the kappa or consonants or other consonants. So I mean the the iota goes after. Okay, you can only subscribe the iota underneath three vowels: the alpha, eta, and omega. After that, those are called improper diphthongs, by the way. After that, you must put the iota if it's in a dative case after the consonant and not below the consonant ever. Okay, so that's just the deal. So if it's gonna be uh, uh, in the date of Panuma, you say Panumati. You see? If you're going to say Arche in the date of you put Iota underneath the, the Iota underneath the Eta and it's Arche with Iota subscript. You understand what I'm saying? So that's just it across the board. And then, um, so that's uh, Sarki, and then, uh, and then, uh, Sarka is in the accusative case, singular construction. And then you have the, the, the plurals, you have, uh, Sarkis, nominative plural, Sarkon, uh, genitive plural, uh, Sarksi, uh, dative plural, and Sarkas, you understand, uh, accusative or uh, plural. Nominative has to do with uh, designation. Genitive has to do with uh, description. And then uh, it's a limitation, but as the kind, what kind of a kina, what kind of a heart man, he said. And the dative case has to do with interest. You understand what I'm saying? And then the um, accusative case has to do with limitation, but as the extent, the extent of the hearing. I found and recorded in Praxis Apostle on the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 22, verse 9. They didn't understand the voice. The modern versions gets that translation Right. Sark. Sark. Sarks. Flesh. And that, and that the mindset, okay, that we had before we became a Christian was an enmity against God, was, was, was a warfare against God, toward God, says over there. Okay. And that's just the deal. Well, I just wanted to put an appendix out there for you guys on the word Sarks. Okay, so that's very important. And soma actually is the Greek word for body, soma. Okay, that's in the neuter. And sarx is in the feminine. And then you have, you know, words in Hebrew like uh, basar for flesh, uh, uh, for skin or flesh. And then or uh, is the Hebrew for, for for flesh. And that's found and recorded in the great, great verse of scripture found and recorded around verses 25 and 26 of chapter 19 of the book of Job or Job. In Hebrew. All right, so let's go to um, let's go to uh, Job chapter nineteen, verses twenty-five and twenty-six, all across the board to prove that uh, a person will have flesh eventually at the resurrection. You understand what I'm saying? So let's look at that. So, so it doesn't mean okay uh, that no one has flesh and that Jesus doesn't have any flesh or whatever the case may be. Uh, and so that's just the deal. So let's look. At, let's look. At the uh, book of Job in Hebrew, Job or Job, and so that's right here recorded. Okay, and so that's just it. So let's look at verse nineteen. Fame, everybody knows the scripture, but the Hebrew probably a lot of people don't know about. So we're gonna get into the Hebrew, and so that's just it by the grace of God. And so let's look at verse twenty-five because I think it begins there. It says over here in the NASB, "As for me, I know." Okay, probably some form of yada there. Um, you know, um, yada means to know, but we'll, we'll check it out. As for me, I know that my Redeemer uh, lives. And at the last, okay, at the last day, says another uh, translation, but at the last, meaning at the last day. The eschaton, you understand what I'm saying? At the last day, he will take his stand on the earth. Okay, so he's going to go back to Jerusalem. Okay, that's just the deal. Verse 26, even after my skin is destroyed, yet, and because worms is not there. Worms is in, in some translations, but I think in the King James, but it doesn't mention worms in the Hebrew. So that's, that's, that's no problem. Even after my uh, skin is destroyed, yet from my flesh... Uh, I shall see God. That's what it says. 
from my flesh. I shall see God. You understand what I'm saying? So let's go to verse 26 in the Hebrew. Okay. In the Hebrew um, side of things. And prove that, you know, I mean, you know, it doesn't it doesn't really mean what the witnesses are saying that Jesus doesn't have any flesh and that and that, and then they're forced to say if Jesus didn't have any flesh and nobody has flesh at all. Okay. But let's just prove that the resurrection does um teach okay that people are gonna have flesh. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna have flesh. This mortal shall put on immortality, and this corruptible shall put on incorruption. You don't do away with the stuff that we had. You understand what I'm saying? The stuff that was created by God, but you cloak over the immortal, the 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 mortal and the and the corruption with uh with immortality and uh, incorruption. You understand what I'm saying? So let's go to the book of Job here, and then let me see where that's at. That's right here. There's more there up there. For I, okay, and that's Ani, okay, Wa Ani. Ani means I in Hebrew, okay. Uh, no, and that's uh, Yada, Yada it says over here, okay, Yada, Yadati, okay, uh, Yadati, and so you have the Yod here, okay, and uh, you have an A class, and then you have a Dalit, which is a, which is a D, and then uh, an A class, like in the word hat, it's a, high, it's a sort of minus sign, and then you have an ion, which is silent with a, with a, the, the schwa underneath it, okay, and then you have a T that was actually let me see if the T was doubled, it's actually hard. A T can't be doubled though. That that top can't that top can't be doubled. It could be hard or soft. So um, the bait can be doubled in the dalit and stuff like that, but you know, but in the noon and the and the and the and the men, but the tau can't be doubled. That's a hardening dogish. And then yeah, underneath it, you got an I class, like in the, like in the word Elohim, right? You got an I class, chirek, uh, and then you have a yod acting like a vowel, so it's e. Okay, so yada, yada, okay, yada, t. Okay, yadati. Yadati. Okay, so that's just a deal. From the Hebrew word, like I said before, okay, yada. Okay, and, and I think maybe Yoda from Star Wars comes out of that. You understand what I'm saying? My, my Redeemer, okay, my Redeemer, okay, uh, lives, and we went through that. Uh, and at last, and at last, okay, from the Hebrew word, um, acharin, acharin, right? Let me see. Acharim, acharim, actually. That's a Aleph with an A class, like in the word hat. So that's A is silent. The Aleph is silent. The Chet is there, C H uh, word, with a Hatef Patach. So that is acha, and then you have the R in Hebrew resh. It means head, by the way. And then you have the vowel acting, or the wow acting like an, like a vowel with an O class above it. That's a dot. That's a whole O class. And then you have the 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 um, the final noon there. So acharon, actually acharon, acharon. Okay, that's uh. And that's, um, you know, that's uh, last. Okay, probably eschatos or something like that in, in the Greek. So we could, we could check that out. We can check that out another time. And then you have over here al, which is a preposition. It means on. El means to, as a matter of fact. Let me move that just a little bit. And so you have a whole bunch of words over here. He shall uh, stand uh Okay, uh, it says uh, the earth. Earth is at uh, is actually afar, uh, afar, and that's ayin, which can be silent with an a class, like in the word father. Okay, that's the t looking thingy again. It's called kametz, ah, uh, and then you have the, then you have okay the pay the the the, the um the pay. Uh, and it's hard to see. I think there's an A class underneath that. Uh, Kavetz is underneath that. Uh, I'm using a magnifying glass. And then you have the resh. So, uh, so, 
a part. Okay, a part. And so that's just the dear earth. And it's uh, is another word for earth as well. Okay. And stand is um yak om or um actually. Okay. Yakum. Yakum. Actually, um ya kum. Yakum. So anyway, that's a uh, yod with the with the uh, kamet. So that's ya, and then you have a kof, not kof. You have a kof here, which is a q, sounding letter in English, and then you have uh, the schwa underneath it. Uh, it has a schwa underneath that. Okay, uh, I think this is not a schwa though. That's not a schwa. I'll strike that. That's just that's not a schwa. And then you have a you have a wow after that with the uh, with the with shurek. A uh, U class, so that's U, and then you have the final mem, which is an M, a uh, different version of M. It's like uh, uh, it's like uh, final sigma. It's just a special style letter that only is used uh, as a last letter of a of a Hebrew word. And you got several of them: final noon, final mem, final cough, and all this other stuff. You understand know what I'm saying? Final sade, like that, you know. So that's just it there, and. Um, it locked up again or what? No, it didn't lock up, no. Let's go to verse 26. It says over here, and after, okay, and after, probably metta in the, in the, in the Greek Septuagint, and after, okay, it says over here, uh, uh, we, achar, and after, my skin, and that's the Hebrew word, or, Ori, actually, because it's possessive. You know, it's his skin, Ori. It would just be or in the lexicon, or skin. Okay, uh, so that's iron with the uh, with the uh, with nothing. <laughs> then the the wow is after that, as a, acting like a vowel with the holom o class. Uh, so that's uh, o so far. Uh, and then you have uh, and then you have uh, uh, resh, which is an r with an i class underneath it. So that's re, and then but then you have the 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 yod acting like a vowel after that, so it changes it to e, like Elohim, Susim, Cherubim, Seraphim, Echadim, Panim, like that, you know. So uh, ori, 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 or it is the lexical the lexical form is or, i n with the with the wow, uh, with the wow with the wow um con um. Consonant, but acting like a vowel here with the O class. A dot, if you see a dot above a Hebrew consonant, most likely you're looking at an O. If you're looking, if you look at if you look and see there's a dot underneath it, you're most likely looking at an I. If you see a dot to the to the left of the Hebrew consonant, you're most likely looking at a U class. That's just as simple as that. For us, the difficulty is speaking like a Jew, is speaking like a Hebrew. You know, I don't expect a Hebrew person to speak like a Spanish person like I speak it. Though some people could do that, you know, and the other way around, some people could speak like a Jewish person very naturally, because they spend all their all their years really, really, you know. Um, but there's different dialects. That's the problem, though. There's walls and rumors of walls. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so let's skip this. It says over here, when uh, you know, after my oil is destroyed, my my skin or. Now remember, he's just talking about. He's not talking about his disease. He's talking about. He's talking about. He's already a disease, though. And he, and then he mentioned last. And I know my redeemer li lives, and I know that he will take a stand. That that that's that, that's eschatology. He's not talking about because the Jehovah's Witness say, well, no, he's talking about the flesh that he was destroyed, and I mean, you know, it is. It, the, 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 you know, he's just, he's talking about the, the here and the now. He's not talking about the here and the now. He's talking about the future. He's talking about the future. His future tenses all over this. You know what I'm saying? It's destroyed, it says over here. Okay, it's destroyed. You know what I'm saying? It says over here, uh, Nick... And then, uh, and then, uh, Pooh, 
it's say when I say it says over here, uh, there's a doubling doggish, uh, okay, in the in the in the cough there, I believe, right? So you got Nick and then Nick Kepu, okay, Nick Kepu, Nick Kepu is doubling doggish in the cough, in the cough. So that becomes that becomes like it's like mathematics to me. I mean, you, it's like you borrow from the you know the the the, the first uh, consonant borrows uh, the consonant that was uh, doubled and takes it, and then the other one remains and it says it's used with the other uh, syllable. You understand what I'm saying? Or, or stands on its own. So I mean, Nick, huh? Nick. So that's just the deal. It says Nick, Kepo. Because it's double. The cough is double. You understand know what I'm saying? So that's just it anyway. At least we can read the stuff, you know. This, this I know, it says over here. This I know. Okay. This I know. Zot. Zot. That's a Zion. That's a, that's a, that's a, a Z letter. You got the O class over that. The silent letter after that. Okay, Aleph. I'm right under, um... Uh, right over uh, uh, the Z-O-T uh, thing. And then you got Tav. That in my flesh. Wait a minute. Didn't he say that his skin was going to be destroyed? But then he says in his flesh. Is that what I'm saying? Hebrew word basar. Basar. For flesh. Bait and it's hardened. And with the A class, like in the word father, Kamed, so it's ba. And then you have the uh, the S, one of the S's in, in Hebrew, the sin, sometimes called sin. Mr. Spock, Leonard Nimoy used to call this letter, okay, sin, or the S-H, shin, and he was a Hebrew. So don't tell me that this can't be uh, a sin or a shin. I mean, you know, sometimes it's pronounced sin or shin, meaning the name of it, or sheen or seen. So this is a, a S, though, and it could be a S-H also. Depending on the upper dot, the upper dot is on the upper left hand side corner, not touching the consonant, shouldn't touch. Uh, I'm right under uh, 1320, and it's an S because of the upper uh, position of the dot. Now there's a commence underneath it, just like there is on, uh, 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 you know, underneath the bit. So you have over here, basa. That's all, ba, sa. That's all. Why does uh, the S look like a set of teeth? Because that's what it is. <laughs> and so then you got the resh or the opposite side looking R sealing the, the second syllable deal and so you got basa now you pronounce the R in Hebrew like you like an almost like an L because you have to put the tongue on the roof of your of your mouth inside the roof of your mouth you understand what I'm saying you only have one roof Unless you're talking about the Flintstones, that's uh, just the deal. And so it's oh, uh, uh, like that, you know? Uh. Basal. Uh. And so I'm going to say, very hard to, to speak. Like a Jewish person, you know? But you know, Jewish person are delightful people, though, man. I had a tour guide job, you know, Dialogue, dialogue in the Dark, uh, way back in 2012. And man, I had Jewish night. And I was, you know, I was responsible to keep them safe in dialogue in the dark in a, in a man-made New York City in total darkness. And so I was responsible to get these 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 uh, these dear people all the way from point A to point Z through through the tar. We went through a man-made train station, a man-made Central Park, a man-made uh, a cafeteria, a man-made uh, supermarket, a man-made, um, you know, uh bridge with water over it or whatever the case may be in germany actually they had a boat instead of the train you know so they were delightful people they were kind of charismatic the, the, the young people were jumping all over the place and having fun and stuff and they were very respectful and the children were nice and they had several jewish people come on the thaw you know what i'm saying there's no, there's no, there's no such thing as anti-Semitism in the Bible, and that's not, not only again, that's not only for Jewish people. There's no such thing as anti-Arab people in the Bible. Anti-Semite is not only anti, you know, Jewish person. There's no license to be anti-nobody in the Bible. That's not Christianity. It's not supposed to be. That's not Christianity. 
So if you see somebody ask, saying they're a Christian and they're anti whoever, I don't care, anti African American, anti Spanish, whatever the case may be, anti Chinese just because the government is like that, anti Korea just because North Korea is going to hell. I mean, you know, we just, we, like, we can't do it. All peoples from all tribes and all nations will be saved. Not everybody, but 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 all tribes. I represent it in Revelation chapter four. Don't forget that. Well, that's just a deal. Uh, so or means skin and basar means flesh. So I guess we will have flesh after all. This is a long appendix. This is longer than the study. But I I, I, I chose to actually uh, bring this off, off to you. Because the witnesses don't know what the hell they're talking about. I'm just saying. They don't. I, I, I hate to be so coy like Martin, like Martin Luther. He, says, uh, he said that um, he was strong. Martin Luther, Martin Luther, the Protestant Protestant, Protestant reformer uh, that set the world on fire, or set the you know put the world upside down on its axis. You understand what I'm saying? And, and way back in 1517, said that the the, the 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 doctrine, the teaching of the Roman Catholic Church is like dung. Everybody knows what dung is. I mean, you know, you know, in, into the belly out of the draft. You understand what I'm saying? Even just as Jesus said. It's like uh, dung on plates of silver and gold. You can't get stronger than that. I'm watering down things. Taking it easy on you guys from the tower. So you can't use. Let's go back. So eventually we're going to have flesh. Eventually we're going to have skin. Even though our skin is destroyed, says this uh, passage of scripture, we will have basar. We will have flesh. Yet in my flesh I shall see God. And the next, next verse says with my own eyes. Because my Redeemer liveth. And because my Redeemer liveth, I'm going to live. And that means I'm going to have flesh too. It is sown, it is raised. Spedetai, egetetai. It is sown, it is raised. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 42 and 43. But let's close with this. Let's look at it again. The NIV. Man, what a translation. As Jesus found and recorded more... And this is for my uh, New Age uh, cult members from the King James, the only, only King James group. You know what I'm saying? They think that they can use the King James and only, and, uh, only and, that, and that's it. As another cult and sect. Gail Ripliger is their mommy. I don't know who's their daddy. You know what I'm saying? Maybe Pedro Martinez. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But anyway... Layaway he used to say my nephew, you know, when I used to put things on layaway, he used to mock me. Layaway, okay. The uh, Jehovah's Witnesses have been putting things on layaway all the time. They've been laying away things. They don't want to make a decision. They don't want to make a commitment. What should it profit you to gain the whole world and yet lose your soul? So you better make a commitment. You better make up your mind. You ain't going to be alive forever on this earth. That's just a deal. No pun intended on the earth. You know you understand what I'm saying? But let's go back to the NIV. Let's go back. It says over here, so from now on, says the Apostle Paul, the Apostle, we regard no one to have any flesh anymore. That's what, that's what it says. It's ridiculous, man. How can I pick up this, this, this phone if I don't have any flesh? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll go right through my hand. You, you, you understand? It's ridiculous, man, because it's like, it's like St. Nicholas. It's ridiculous, like St. Nicholas. You understand what I'm saying? The fake one, anyway, not the real one. I ain't diamond on the real Santa Claus. I mean, if there was such a thing, probably there was some kind of a, you know, person going around giving gifts to people and stuff like that, and everybody, you know, got confused. Says over here, no. <laughs> it says from, uh, from now on, okay, we... Regard, we re re Christian people. We regard no one from a worldly uh, point of view. We, the Christian, the, the Christian people, though uh, we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. See, that's 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 Christianity, and that's repentance. We don't count Jesus as as like you know. A small person in our life. Oh yeah, yeah, Jesus. We believe in Jesus, you know. But we, we you know, we'll have him in the closet occasionally. Occasionally, we'll, 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 you know, 
open the door and let them out, you know. Easter Sunday, stuff like that, Christmas, holidays, and then we'll put them back in the closet. You know, no, 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 no. You better get into your closet and pray. And he who sees in secret shall reward you openly. You understand what I'm saying? You can't put God in the box. We're in the box. We're, we're being examined. That's just the deal. We have to do with catharsis. God has to do with being creator. And he expects a lot from you and from me. There ain't no seals. There ain't no kick coming to the non-Christian and the Christian. We're all going to be judged at the Bema, meaning us Christian people, at the Bema, at the judgment seat of Christ. And y'all, outside of Christ, are going to be judged if you stay like that at the white throne. Revelation chapter 22, verses 11 through 15. They came out of the water. They came out of the graves. Chapter 5 of John says the same thing. You understand what I'm saying? Everlasting disgust. You understand what I'm saying? Last chapter of Isaiah, chapter 66. That's just a deal. How shall you escape if you neglect so great salvation? Now is the accepted time. Greek word noon. Now is the day of salvation. Our God is a consuming fire. Unquenchable fire. Luke 3, Matthew 3. Asbestos, I think it's the Greek word for unquenchable. So if it was annihilation, how can uh, John the Baptist say unquenchable? Because as soon as something, something is annihilated, he's unquenched. But no, the smoke of, of, that, of, the, of the torment goes up forever. Smoke and fire. You know what I'm saying? There's four Greek words, according to Romans chapter 2, that describes the great pressure of God. Ignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish. There you go. Look at the Greek words. The pressure that's going to be upon, upon the ungodly and the unrighteous because of his unrighteousness. Who suppressed the truth in his unrighteousness. You understand what I'm saying? That's just the deal. Make your decision. It's either the terror or everlasting fire and torment. The devil prepared for the devil and his angels. That's just the deal. Take, take it back. Ain't no skin off my nose. God, is, he doesn't lose. He's commanding you to repent. And if you don't, you're going to be burned up. It's going to go up forever. Trillions and trillions and zillions of years. Smoking, agony, torture, screaming out loud, yelling. Because you're separated from God because of your fornications and crimes. Because you chose Russell, that punk, more than you chose Jesus. And then you dumped him, and then you didn't choose Jesus. You chose Franklin Rutherford, who wasn't even a judge. He was a lawyer. You chose him. And after that, you chose Nathan the hot dog. This is not only for the Watchtower and Bible Track Society. This is for any other cult or sect or any false religion that has a very low opinion, a worldly opinion of God's people and Christ. The whole trinity. Is being despised by certain sects and groups that say, say not trinity. But you're going to bow down to this trinity. You're going to bow down to God before you're sent to hell. So what is it going to be? Oh, but I lose. I, 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 if I... You know, uh, nobody's going to love me anymore. My family, my friends. What does it profit to gain the whole world? You get lose your soul. What are you going to give us change for your soul? Why? She could gain everything now for what? For over 50, 60, 70 years? The expected life of a Muslim is only 70 years. You're going to trade that? You're going to trade that away? And anybody else in, 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 in any other cult or sect or false religion? You're going to trade 70 years for zillions and zillions of years in hell? Burning up? And you can't even get out? You ever touched a pot before, man? And then you just you just shy away from the pot, a hot pot or a hot cup of coffee or something like that, and your mouth just, oh, no, it's too hot. You can't do that in hell. Your whole body's in there. But it's the separation that's going to kill you. It's the remembrance and stuff like that. It's that your family who you duped is going to be in there with you. And your friends and your coworkers and <laughs> your people in the shop. That's just a deal. Torture, agony, anguish, pain. And the thing is that if you went in with cancer, 
you're going to have a cancer throughout all eternity. If you went in there with no legs, I mean, you ain't going to be healed. You ain't going to be healed at the judgment. If you have some sort of disease, you ain't going to be healed. Why should God heal you? So you're going to go in there and it's going to be like, uh, you know, out of the out of the frying pan into the fire. She will be, be thrown into the lake of fire. It's adding insult to injury. I mean, it, the pain, the suffering, the anguish, the scarring, the flames. Oh, but, but, but there ain't no such thing as Gehenna. Yeah, punk. Yes, there is. Spiritually, there was an example of Gehenna on earth. Ain't, and ain't, ain't there no more, but so why? The invisible things are examples of the of the uh, the the visible things are examples of the of the of the of the invisible. That's why there ain't no excuse. We call it natural revelation. Some people call it special revelation. You understand what I'm saying? The the, the Bible, but then um, natural revelation, okay, has to do with the things that you can see, that you can touch, that you can smell, that you can taste. You understand what I'm saying? Ain't no excuse. Everybody's born with at least one sense. But you know, there's special children that they don't come under the umbrella of judgment because they're special children. They have special grace. They can't call upon the name of the Lord, so they just come up with special mercy. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the person who is able to call out upon the name of the Lord that doesn't want to because of their religion. They're able to do it. They're able to talk. They're able to think things out. They just can't do it. But they hold they hold under responsibility because they got into that, into that condition in the first place. The reason why they can't is because of them. Selves. Had your type on tensor. Because of themselves, not because of God. Not God seals the deal. He sold the you know, he sealed the deal, you know, by by locking up, you know, uh hardening up uh, a Pharaoh's heart. But he hardens, he's hardened up his own heart. And then just God said, okay, I'll just close it more for you. I'll put a zipper on it. You understand what I'm saying? I'll zip it up with a zipper and a key. You close your heart towards me, I'm going to close it up more. I'm going to put some in on it. I'm going to put a special seal. It's more, worse than the Romans. That's just a deal. What is it going to be, man? What's it going to be? You're going to be deceiving people all the rest of your life? I don't care if you're game run proselyte. When you're gaining, you make them a twice a child of hell than yourself. You're a, chi a child of hell, and you make them a twice, twice a child of hell than yourself. Proselyte means convert, by the way. I don't care how many times you go door to door. God doesn't care about that either. He doesn't care. He's not a respecter of persons. He doesn't care because there's different messages going around. He's not going to respect you because you, you work so hard at the tower or, uh, 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 or from the mosque or whatever the case may be or in the Mormon church with your little bicycles and stuff like that. You understand what I'm saying? And your ties and your shirts. Denying the father. Saying that Joseph Smith is going to be in charge at the judgment. Saying that he's the redeemer of the church of the care. Come on, that's disgusting, man. The guy about killed two people on his way out. He can't be the redeemer. He died like a punk. He died with a pistol in his hand. A gun. <laughs> Probably didn't have pistols at that time. You know what I mean? Before he was assassinated, Joseph Smith, way back in 1844, and he was running for, you know, the presidency. I mean, goodness gracious, but then he was in jail. And so that's just the deal. He, he killed one or two persons and wounded another person before he got shot uh, through the window and fell down and then popped him again just to make sure, just to seal the deal. He didn't die as a hero. He didn't die as a martyr. He died as a murderer. He killed people on his way out. In jail. Carter's jail, by the way. He was an adulterer. He was called the Yankee Muhammad. He was a family of Muhammad. As a matter of fact, that Alvin Schmidt book uh, entitled um, American Muhammad, Joseph Smith, founder of Mormonism. I mean, that's a great book, though. Pick it up, though. It, got, it gives you all the information of his crimes. How can somebody be in a Mormon church? I don't know. Just because of Donnie and Marie? Come on, man. Come on. Stop with that. And then, I, I don't know if Lindsay Wagner, the bonded woman, became a Mormon. Somebody just told me recently. I don't know if that's true. But if that's true, man, she's going to get what she deserves. And she, and she can't say, oh, I was, you know, to God, oh, I was the bonded woman. 
Now, I don't know if that's true, but I mean, nobody could say, oh, I was this, I was that. I mean, I was, um, you know, I was, uh, I was George Jefferson on the Jeffersons. I was Archie Bunker on, uh, you know, uh, whatever. The Archies. <laughs> I, don't, I, never, I never watched that show. I was I Dream of Genie and, and, and Genie. I was Genie on I Dream of Genie. I was the father in the Brady Bunch. Because they're all fake. I was this, I was that, I was this actor, I was this singer. I was, that, that doesn't mean none of the guy. He's not a respect your presence, man. He spits on that doll. That which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. So what are you going to do? Are you going to make a decision? Now, I'm not saying make a decision like, you know, Billy Graham used to say, you know, make a decision like you do it on your own. But, I mean, you have to call it. Let's put it like this. Whosoever shall call upon in the name of uh, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And the problem with the tower is and other cults and sects that they don't believe that they could pray to Jesus. Well, if you don't believe that you could pray to Jesus, you ain't going to be saved. You have to call upon Jesus. You have to confess. You have to agree. You have to agree that you were an awful sinner and contaminating and, and, and radioactive to boot. That you gave other you, 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 you gave others radiation. You understand what I'm saying? The radiation of your teachings. You have to confess to God. You have to call upon his name. You have to agree to the deity of Christ. That's uh, Romans chapter 10. And you have to agree that God raised him from the dead bodily. And if you don't, you're going straight to hell. Two L's, by the way. And there's no form of escape. There's no form of annihilation. Because again, Matthew chapter 3 and Luke chapter 3 says, by the, by the mouth of John the Baptist, unquenchable fire. So I disagree with the teaching of the tower, the interpretation of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. Now, it's not that we don't think of Jesus having flesh. It's not that we don't think of anybody else having flesh. It's not that that's not the deal. Goodness gracious, now you know that their leader went to the seventh grade. Only. I mean, you know, and jo Joseph Smith only went to the second grade. Combined, Joseph Smith and Charles Says Russell went to the ninth grade, man. They didn't even, I mean, they almost didn't even go to high school together. You're going to follow leaders like that? Good luck, man. You want to give your life to the to the cruel? Go ahead. You want your daughters to be bakers? Go ahead. I told you the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Amen.